Welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to the School of Calisthenics podcast Q and A number eleven. Eleven. Do I have to stay this close? I don't know. It looks pretty big, so I imagine it can pick you back away from the mark. You'll have noticed that things have stepped up a notch. And you won't, fairly, if, you, if you're listening, you may to or podcast, may not have noticed. Oh uh, yeah, you won't. But what we've got, describe it for the people, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> we've got we don't, we don't we're not that subtle really at the school of cats so we've got, we've got a Dave, podcast we've got a podcast mic it's a podcast mass, mic it's massive it's big yeah it's good that, though it could do some damage my my thoughts are all the gear no idea yes yeah. it sums us up perfectly and if you yeah there's even there's a little bit there's another story behind us but that's for another time but if you yeah. knew what was really going on with this let's not get bogged down yes in the final it's details. number 11 and it is professional that's what that's that's to me says big time yeah big time podcast big time mic. <laughs> big time guys okay we just need to be big time okay. to, to stand up to right that. so we need some big time questions and then today we're mixing it up and we're going to share because there's only real way that was fair to share the um question master ring the question master ring the question question master ring dual question masters so you you're you're, you're excited about this one well i've got one which i'm saving and it came up on it on youtube and I've, I've intentionally not asked it to you or, or told you the question because i want to get you a reaction but i'm going to save that for my second question oh, so i'm going to so warm me up warm you up okay with a question from um daz brad dad daz brad brad yes is that his real is that his real is that his real name <laughs> every time is that his real name? Um, hi guys, I'm 44 and never done calisthenics before. I've always done triathlons and marathons, etc. But slowing down now, I want to start building myself a bit. What is the first thing I should do uh, when starting on the calisthenics journey? The very first thing. The very first thing he needs to do. Um, what? I thought you were going to be completely on brand then and get the very first thing he needs oh, well, to do. I was going to, oh. but then I just thought that was... Come well, on. clearly the first thing he needs to do <laughs> is download our free beginner's guide, um, which I believe probably of about 50,000 people have now, something oh, like that. Um, yes, yeah, so that's free. There's, I think, 15 video tutorials in that for push, pushing, pulling and core and um, a lot of them, probably two thirds of them, you can do without any equipment. So I don't know, I'm looking at you. So you can do without any equipment, so um, you can just get cracking with that at home. Um, and then raid our flipping YouTube channel because there's loads of uh, great content around there. We're really passionate about getting beginner started because we know how difficult it is to get started in Kaiser. If you watch an amazing video from like yeah. Frank Madrano, maybe even one of Tim's amazing videos, and you go like, I want to be able to do that, and that's amazing. But where the hell do yeah, I where start? You get started? Um, I think there's something that interests um, is interesting to me. Having trained a lot of athletes in the past from various different sports, like I think I've, I think when I count them up, I've trained athletes in over thirty different sports. I've seen a lot of different body types and how people move. And um, Daz Brad Brad yeah. mentions that he's done triathlons and marathons. Now those yeah. things, in my experience, yeah. are not the most conducive to upper body strength. Swimming, yes. but it's probably triathlons. Is maybe, but yeah. it might be that when you're starting off at the beginning, the real focus is just basics. Just yeah. get those things nailed down. I'm not saying you are like, making massive assumptions, but a lot of yeah. marathon runners that I know, they don't spend a lot of time in the gym. Yeah. They don't spend a lot of time in you strength. Don't need, you don't need it. Do you? It's a strength to weight ratio. Sport is optimizing your body composition so that you can perform those things better, and that that's ideal for that type of discipline of sport, or event of sport. But coming into um, calisthenics, you can probably get attracted by some of the sexy stuff. But we would, I would proportion my time out so that I was focusing on the absolute basics. So what my pull-ups like, push-ups, dips, variations of those different sorts yeah. of things, body weight rows, so all the sorts of stuff that we've put in the beginner's yeah. guide. And it, it, we, aren't, we, we genuinely put that, that guide out, not because we were just trying to flog something, but genuinely because we came from a point of, of um, starting in calisthenics. And we both played rugby and done a decent amount of strength training in the past. So we were starting at a point which meant that we actually had some of those kind of movement competences and senses in terms of pull-ups and stuff sorted. Um, we put that together because we know how difficult it is. And actually, the real thing from our strength and conditioning background is that people will go, oh, here's how to do a pull-up, but there's, there's such variety in that. And you'll see from the video that we've, we've broken it down and we've kind of focused on the important parts of it. And as Dave says, if you, if you get into that guide and you're sort of, one pull-up's difficult, there's also on the YouTube, three or four different yeah. videos on, on how to progress pull-ups using different tools and yeah. that sort of stuff. And there's and on the blog, on the website, scorecastings.com, there's a load of 
other things around there for like a lot of that and a lot of our content in, in that respect um, is based around helping beginners get started yeah. and one foot up on onto the next next rung or where to go after that the one thing I think I would say just as an aside yeah. is that you would when you're starting a new form of training it's quite a good opportunity to implement better practices mm. so one of the things that we do which is really important it's something that I do at the beginning of every single session the same thing with our athletes is yeah. getting into the habit of doing some form of movement preparation so we talk to, to a lot of people and they go, oh, stretching, mobility, it's kind of doesn't really get done. Yeah. If you get into calisthenics, just take that as part of calisthenics that yeah. improve your shoulder range of movement, looking after your sort of structure integrity, improving posture, making sure that you're not waiting for an injury to stop you and force you into that, but it's actually becoming part of day-to-day -day what you do. Um, I just think when you, when you come into something from, from the beginning, you've got a great opportunity to, to start with a yeah. blank piece of paper and go, what is best for yeah. me? And my recommendation is that that movement preparation, um, some foam rolling, yeah. uh, particularly if he's, he's not work. done, potentially not done much upper body work and mm. certainly won't have done some of the stuff he's going to go into and look after, do some, do some prep work and sort out your shoulders and your wrists, I would say, because yeah. you're not going to, if you sort of keep those two things intact, your elbow in the middle will probably be all right. Yeah. And then they just won't be used to some of the stuff you're doing and so just touch on that in terms of when someone's coming into it the adaptation around ligaments and tendons and that yeah. sort of stuff well just taking so much longer that they were gonna, you're going to end up putting a lot more strain through your connective tissue um which is one thing it's not going to be used to it and it's going to be a bit of a shorter system and the other is because of restricted blood supply to it and that sort of thing it's going to take it takes a lot longer for it to adapt so Tim used coined a phrase a while ago, use the, uh, use, earn the right to progress. So take your time with it. Don't try to always just, mistake I make too often is you're trying to just push and push and push and like do the next thing, the next thing, rather than actually when you're starting out, get really comfortable, like Tim said, with those basics. Look after your shoulders, look after your wrists. Um, and then that, that, all those sort of connective tissue niggles can hopefully you can keep them to a minimum and yeah the downside of it is you, you, you do something which you're highly unaccustomed to it's high tension yeah. you overload it too much you're going to end up with a bit of a niggle and then that stops you from training and it's difficult because calisthenics is exciting and one of the great things about it is when you first start that rate of progression I and mean, how hard you might have worked to improve your marathon pb yeah. when you first start calisthenics you'll be like crikey i've been banging away at these running all these miles just to try and knock a few seconds off and you're literally going to go from one week to the next yeah. seeing a massive amount of progress and that's why it's addictive but just put the brakes on a little bit yeah. take your time you may well choose to ignore that because I probably wouldn't have done it <laughs> but yeah. that's, that's one of the yeah, things that we've if you listen to us and hit read enough stuff there's uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the title there's a couple of blogs there's one in particular that was like 10 things to do when you start yeah. calisthenics or three mistakes I think we yeah, yeah. shared on a different blog three mistakes we made when we started that we'd recommend you don't do um, and I would I would take take that advice on board definitely um i think we both agree if we started again right now rather than being three and a half years in yeah. and we did things do i know because i know myself i'd i'd struggle with the discipline of doing what i should do but um if i did i'd be in a much further place yeah. forward if, yeah we've if made a lot of mistakes yeah. and but that's part of well, for us it's part of the journey yeah, about yeah. being a coach like we make those mistakes we cut them out so you can learn faster yeah. and that's enough good for that. boom Come on. you go number so, two okay Okay, so question number two comes from me. Well, I'm going to read it out. It doesn't actually put it on no, my it's question. It's not your question. That'd be good. <laughs> well, that'd be good. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. next time we can bring in our own questions. It's from Pedro Martins, and he is comes in straight off the right. He probably should have gone first because he starts with loving the podcast, guys. Okay. Tick. Thank you. <laughs> um, he, so he's got a couple of questions. We're only going to answer the first one, which is an important one. His second question was about keto diets, which we'll worry about that another day. Um, so he, well, the first one is the one he wants answering most. And um, it's a little bit about injury prevention, I guess. Um, he says, um, he's got a question about strengthening wrists. He says his right wrist is really weak. Um, and that's with an A, not double A, as he spelt it. Okay. <laughs> and hurts like a mother... Don't and say that. A, well, no, because he hasn't written. It's okay. got like the at and then an and sign. Yep. You know what I mean? So it hurts a lot. Um, when his palm is on the ground in a press-up position or like a handstand position. Um, but when he goes into doing push-ups on his knuckles, he likes doing martial arts, so they like yep. doing push-ups on his knuckles, it's fine. Um, so what can you suggest? And is there any like exercises he could do to try and strengthen it? And actually, I want to, I'm going to just tweak his question a little bit for you in terms of going like, it, it, we should be asking is it a strengthening issue or is it an 
injury like what do you think might be going on and what advice have we got for him right is that better yes so you like that? Right, that twist I put on it um, Pedro Pedro first thing oh and he left his telephone number we... I won't read that out okay um, okay first thing without seeing it and knowing more about injury, injury history I feel that I can't give you a hundred percent solution um, but we can potentially talk around some things but my, my first piece of advice we go and get checked out good bye a physiotherapist yes uh, that would be my first point because it, there could be some stuff going on so I'm gonna just gonna I'm gonna spitball a little bit um, my wife has broken both wrists she has problems in the same position um, and I literally she's been complaining about it for a while and I said go and see the physio go and see the physio you seen the physio yet Go and see the physio. So she's now booked an appointment, which oh, is good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, How long ago did she break it? Well, mate, over, I don't know, the first time we went snowboarding together, she broke it, and that was 10 years ago. <laughs> yes, okay. And then she broke it again about four years ago, the other side, snowboarding. And we're going to snowboard in March. So it's important, yes. I think, that she gets it sorted. Yeah. However, even as a strength and conditioning coach with, a, yeah. with some body of experience, um, I, I don't feel that yeah. that's something for me to check out. And I also feel, even if we were sat here as physiotherapists, Without seeing you, agree. You actually, you can't go. Well, well, it's this, and therefore do these exercises. Yeah. Like you need to see somebody hands on. But and the reason for that potentially, but given the martial arts um, experience, when I did a little bit of kickboxing, I had issues around scaphoid and, and not connecting with bags and stuff properly, and my wrists weren't great for a period of time. Um, you could strap them, which may help um, give a little bit of support. Or I use wrist wraps when doing uh, quite a lot of handstand or vertical pushing work particularly not as much for handstands uh, yeah. for, for push-ups sorry um those sorts of things help but it they could be masking a, a problem um from a soft tissue perspective there may be some tightness in the forearm ex flexors or extensors we've got a video which we did around relieving yeah. some wrist pain which um, we can link to um, that might be worth checking out but if it's that painful where it's actually stopping you from doing something like that my recommendation would be to get someone to have a yeah. look at it you need to get hands on they need to feel the quality yeah. of the movement and I'm going to spin this into something we get a lot of questions from people who ask us I've got back pain when I do this I've got shoulder pain when I do that like yes if you were in the room with us we might be able to give you a little bit of advice as to what the course of action might be but to anybody listening who feels like they want to send us one of those questions, what we're going to say is go and see a physio yeah. every single time. With working professional sport, that's the same approach we would take the athletes. Yeah. We're not able to give that sort of detail advice because it's just not fair on you because we can't see you yeah. and we don't want to put you at more risk. Yeah. So we would just much rather tell you to go and make an investment and see somebody who can sort it out for I just, you. I'd just pick up on one thing. It's interesting that um, wrist extended with his hand on the floor, pain, in neutral position, fine on the knuckles. So, and we get that a lot of the time with people when they're trying to do frog stands for the first time, and the wrist, if they've got an issue with the wrist, they don't like it. Yeah. Go on to like some little um, hand bars on the floor and keep that wrist in that neutral position. Um, then, then it's sort of it's fine. That's and you're saying the same sort of thing. Um, yeah, can't so, that she's okay in neutral, yeah. but she's not good. So, but that so that could be something around like mm. you were saying, something around like your your flex is being tight, so you can't extend very well, or actually you've got some sort of issue in the joint yeah. that needs to be addressed, and you can't determine whether you know. So you might get a bit of if you did some forearm release of those those flexors, you might get it might be a little bit more comfortable in extension, mm. but you still like you were saying, it might be hiding the fact that you've got an issue around your uh, your wrist in the joint that needs to be yeah. addressed, and it, and. Uh, if you're going to speak to the physio, I would just give them a little bit more um, conventional feedback on yes, those two those two positions hurts like that doesn't hurt in neutral, but then also what the type of pain is um, that it's like yeah. dull or it's it's stabby or it's pinchy rather than it hurts like a mother. Yeah, don't say that. <laughs> no swearing. Um, you, what I was going to say, Dave? Yeah, it is. What was I going to say? Tell the physio what you're going to do. Like tell yes. them that you're trying to learn to handstand because it makes a big difference. And also my recommendation is a lot of people say, oh, I've seen physios before, they didn't tell me anything. Seek out someone good, go and see yeah. someone who's working with athletes. Um, if that means you have to pay a little bit more for it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Good physio, good physio is worth their waiting Absolutely. Cold. Totally. Right, I hope that helps. Yes. I think it's an important issue that we've addressed. Now I'm looking forward to this one. Question with So Tim has, been, Tim has been saying that this is going to be a really <laughs> funny one, I think. Um, and this is the last question. I'm interested to... And I don't know this. But like Blige, you didn't know what Pedro's question was. No, I didn't. Yeah, we I didn't. actually do all these straight off the cuff. Right. Rob Roddy 3. 
Oh no, sorry, Rob Roddy, three days ago. That was, was copy and paste. Is that, his, oh, is that his name? Rob Roddy. So his surname isn't three days ago. No, no, I think that's Rob mine. Rod Roddy. Roddy. It's yeah. like a tongue twister. Hey bud, just became a sub. <laughs> yeah. Guilty. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. I've sub. I like on yeah. So before we did YouTube, I didn't know it was called sub. Just subbed. Subbed. It's like cool. when I played rugby, if I was subbed, that was really bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd done a bad thing. That's my all week. Right. I've been looking at your vids and have to say, you have huge calves. <laughs> <laughs> Did you grow your calves by body weight or sprints or something like that? How is this a real question? <laughs> <laughs> Legit, that is. <laughs> I need like that. And who's he talking to? <laughs> Both of us. I went back and I went, I'm sorry, Rob, <laughs> are you taking the piss? <laughs> He goes, no, no, we've had a conversation. He goes, no, no, serious. What, he likes, oh, big. Is it, where, is, is this conversation been on YouTube or where's the yeah, conversation? YouTube, oh, yeah, YouTube. Oh, so I've missed yeah, it. Yeah, I've hidden it away from you. Oh. Is that well, the question? The whole question? question? You've got huge calves, how do you grow them? He's no, I'm like, he's definitely not talking about me. Rob no, Bonnie might be the first, look, we're going painting. Oh, look yeah, at people on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. You've got me calves out. Go and on, then, Tim, show us your, let's have a calf off. No, they're not. Go on, put them out. I think we've got very similar, like, calves. Like calf twins. You might be the first person to ever say that, ever compliment our low body. I've Not never had, had yeah. Do you have any, like, do you have any legs, lads? Oh, I shit. normally get, <laughs> normally, my favourite one is to go, oh, nice calves, Tim. Do they come in men's? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Charlie's, isn't That's, it? No, I gave Charlie that. Because oh, someone gave it, someone said it to me, and I gave it to. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, no. The, the, well, the answer is we, ha we don't have I've, calves in our training routine. No. So, like, I. Although some, there's interesting, like I've never been like mad keen on calf raising and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I don't know the science behind it, but I think there's some, like some parts of your body, like genetic deposition plays a big role in like, I don't know if I spent all day, every day doing calf raises, how yeah. much bigger I'd get mine. Whereas, you know, you see some, some like rugby is a great example, like some of the props would have like enormous calves, but they're like big blokes. So it's almost like they need them more and. I'm a bit more of a traditionally ectomorphic if I didn't train. I'll tell you a story about calves. Go on. <laughs> so the, the function of what the calf does, like the, 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 you might see some people who go like flipping, my father-in-law, huge calves. Oh, really? Like, like, yeah, like as big as my leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but sorry. not very explosive. Yes. Now, I once trained a basketball player who was six foot ten, six foot eleven. He had, like, if you look at his calf, it was like all Achilles tendon. Yeah. Tendon, 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 and then this bulbous thing at the top. Yeah. And this guy could jump, right? So the tendon produces, a, Achilles tendon produces a huge amount of force. So for sprinting, for running, people that have got quite long tendons, it can produce more force, more explosive. So your props, yeah. big, fat, chunky calves, yeah. Power, most of them strength. just trundle around. Yeah. Not the most electric kind of sprinters. Not all, but largely speaking. Yeah, a, few, a couple of guys, big guys with some They jets. can put some gas but on. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know, so I know exactly what you're saying. different kind of body makeup. So yeah, yeah you're right with that. The, the, I've also not really ever done any calf raise exercises. Sprinters will use it as a capacity exercise because the ability to stay high on the toe. Yeah. When we're sprinting, we're training, or track sprinters, we don't really, well, we don't want at all as a heel hitting the ground. So we want them up on the toes the whole time. So the I calf, still think, sorry, I still think he's taking the piss. And I, I clarify, I, I check with him. We're going into some detail. Here. Yeah, I know. I'm just... calisthenics. Um, <laughs> But Jack I'm and gonna I bring it back round. I've both Don't played worry. field running based sports yep. since a very young age. So I've it's never been a focus of mine, but we have I've spent a lot of time doing sprint work. That was the only thing that I was good at really at rugby. I was quite quick, I'm not very big. Yeah. Um so I just used to try and be faster than everybody else and not get hit by people who are much bigger than me. Yeah. Um, and that was all I had. And my calves probably tell us if you look at my calf, it's probably I've got a reasonable kind of makeup of what I was describing before, not yeah. quite as good as the basketball player I trained. Yeah, and uh, my, so yes, and I still think he's taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> so he's probably having a great time listening to this game. I can't believe I got them to talk about their cars. I couldn't resist it when it came up on a jacket or a look. My only, my only thing is like, my only worry is that like, the question is round like the aesthetics part of the car, yes. if you like, and being like, that is just, not something to worry about because I don't think you make an awful lot of, a lot of change to that. It's more like what the the, the hand you were dealt. Yeah, you, you, your return on investment in calf training yes. is pretty minimal. Yeah, 
even if so when we talk about using it with an athlete with a sprinter it's because we want them to stay high on that toe yeah it's for a performance outcome we're not going we don't look at them and go mm, your calves look a little bit yeah, small yeah, yeah, yeah. for the photo finish at the end we want them to just even them out a little mm-hmm. bit um and and yeah and so my thing is just don't flip and worry about it we i don't think just, he was worried i think yeah, it was more okay. of a just what have you yeah but there will be okay but there will be some people though yeah. that will that's not a the other thing training that you've touched not, on is this strategy that you've taken about wearing more high top socks yeah no that's a great strategy that's actually oh, from we tell the people about that <laughs> i thought it was from what's the guy what's the guy's name he's big on youtube we need to shout him out Dom, Dom, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, bro science guy. That's it, bro science. It was like, if you've got small calves, you can take your, you have a white high, high ball on your socks. I haven't got my socks on because I spilled some water and trod on it. <laughs> but go on, show, you've got, your, you've got the socks on. Show us the, show yeah. us the look. Look, so, so look, so look, you know, for those on, can you see, so, can we see? Chair's making terrible noise, hang on. Come on, get, get your leg up, get, up. get, get your leg on there. No, do keep them down, keep them down. Is that, there's a, pod, there's a mic in the way. <laughs> so you can see now with Tim's calf, sock low, that's it, sock low, this is really weird. Yeah. Sock low, calf looks really small. Now, bang, <laughs> high pull, now look at that. Sold. Don't need to worry, look. If you watch, if you listen Big to the podcast, calves. you might, that is worth You've missed going it. on. Go, yeah, go, and check, watch. Yeah. Yeah. go and check that bit out. Um, I feel like yeah. that's been a slightly different take on our normal it podcast. Has. And the Q&A content however i enjoyed it more yeah i hope people have found that we've got some at least some average banter <laughs> as we've always with that so thanks for the questions guys as always keep them coming in we try to pick we answer a few directly online and then we'll try and pick out the ones which i think are going to make jack laugh or that we think are going to be helpful to other people yeah. if you tell us that you like what we're doing then you'll probably you'll get you automatically go up into the short list um you make it away from the long list yeah. immediately uh, but you can ask questions on Facebook, Twitter, in the comments below on YouTube, um, email platform. us, anywhere. Uh, get Ring on the Dave. contact form. Ring Dave, yeah, my phone number's on the website. Ring me. Um, t- text me, it'd be easier. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, if you haven't yet subscribed, click that up by Tim's head if he moves out there. There we go, bang. And if you haven't got a free beginner's guide, that's down by Tim's elbow, or his, oh, no, no, by his bicep. And then uh, for last, the last Q&A, which was Q&A 10, that's over by me. So until next time. Class dismissed.